Welcome in everybody to Solomon's Crown, where I am struggling to stay awake, but I got time today. Um, That's Cap. I mean, we got my boy Pop here. He's going to call me a Capaholic, but there is no Cap in my rap, uh, as some would say. Uh, you know, just got back from the gym. And she, you know. But uh, that's not why we're here today. Today we're here because uh, the Jewish people have responded to Kanye West. And, mm-hmm. uh, I am interested to see what they have to say. Uh, we'll save all our comments and bias opinions, as some would say, to the end. But I just really want to hear what the story is um you know there's always two sides to every story and um uh, i think we just attack this from multiple angles this might turn into a series or something like that because i mean there's a lot of talk about as far as the Kanye situation and it's not just about anything that he said granted some would say that he's radical crazy lost his mind and he's saying a bunch of wild and crazy stuff but people who are crazy usually say stuff based off of something that they believe to be a fact. So I've watched multiple interviews on Kanye and minus some of the radical things he would say, because you can't be too blunt nowadays with people because Mm -hmm. you can't hurt people's feelings. But without me ranting on forever, let's get into the video. It's a pretty decent one. So before you do that, make sure you subscribe hit that bell notification, follow us for more content as we provide things. more All content. Um, and from there, this is going to be a long one. So uh, everybody buckle up and let's get into uh, this video. Jewish children to look at their daddy and say, why is Jay mad at us? I could say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? The Jewish people have their hand on every single business that controls the world. So for all the Jewish media, y'all wanna sit down and have a conversation with me? Then let's have a conversation. Yay, you wanted the Jewish people to own up and respond to your claims and demands? So listen up, this is our answer. Yay, after witnessing your recent interview videos, tweets, and the world's response to your messaging, it is evident that you're trying to create a conversation around several topics that are weighing heavy on your conscience. While attempting to empower the black community, revealing the truth that many black people are descendants of the tribes of Israel who were in Africa and later taken as slaves to the Americas, and seeking to call out individual Jews for bad practices, you fell DEFCON 3 to the world's ears when going on attack mode. You don't heal darkness with more darkness. If you use your voice, especially aimed at Jews who you call your own people. So Agent Callow in there. Oh wow, they really hit us with a commercial on Facebook. Are you serious bro? Bro, that's wild. That I think you stole the painting. Video. I know you didn't do it. Yo, we really getting trolled out of here. Scenes take violence and timing. I can do both. Digitally pre-order Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and play the campaign now. Nah, you good. PlayStation. You must come from a place of light. Your fire is a superpower. It gives you the ability to create and rise above others. But if you let that fire control you, you end up burning those around you. Your words impact the minds of millions, and you seriously tripped up when you started regurgitating Jewish conspiracy theories, sprinkling blatant historic anti-Semitic tropes, which have been used to push waves of terror and persecution against the Jewish people for generations, and blaming Jews for all of your problems or traumas experienced, which always leads to physical harm against Jews at the very least. The source of your problem begins with you coming from a place of jealousy. I'm jealous of the fact of how they don't abort their babies. I'm jealous of the fact of how they stay with their wives. I'm jealous of the fact of how they do business together. I'm jealous of the fact of how they read their contracts and understand their contracts. I'm jealous of the fact, I'm jealous of the way uh, Jewish people do business. I'm envious that they turn their phones off on Friday night and the family comes together. I want my people to rise up like the Jewish people. I'm a competitor. Most people in positions of power are not Jewish, but given the current recognized Jewish community amounts to 15 million worldwide, which is only 0.2% of the world's population, you are right that Jewish representation in positions of power is extremely high. Jews also excel in spaces outside of finance. Many top doctors, scientists, researchers, artists, engineers, and founders of charitable movements are Jewish. 
This phenomenon has nothing to do with Jews being born Jewish or into success. Quite the contrary. Mm -hmm. Jews throughout history have constantly been hated, persecuted, exiled, converted by force, burned, crucified, exterminated, and suffered more for thousands of years than any of us can imagine. Even today, Jews make up 13% of New York City's population, yet over 56% of the total hate crimes committed in NYC are specifically against Jews. I remember Ben Horowitz called me after 444 and said, I don't know about Jay giving up business, Jewish business secrets. Mm, and these he secrets... Said, he, he was talking about um, building up uh, the, the properties and stuff like that. Yeah, on 444. these secrets can't... They're not finna be a secret no more. Like, if somebody mm. tells me something, it's like, yo, I want to tell you this, but it's a secret. I'm like, I'm not your personal hard drive. <laughs> like, if you want to be a secret, <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> I'm not here to keep nobody's secrets because it's only the truth that's going to set us free. Yay, I'm going to let you in on a secret and feel free not to keep it. The formula for Jewish success comes from our ancient culture and traditions. Let me give you an example. Just a few hundred years ago, most humans on earth were illiterate and did not know how to read or write. But throughout history, mm -hmm. most Jews knew how to read and write due to their bar and bat mitzvahs. A passage to adulthood test, where an entire portion of the Torah is recited in Hebrew, all while memorizing the pronunciation of each word without vowels. Not to mention the fact that Jews also learned Gemara and Talmud, which are texts with deep disagreements from varying perspectives, which develop critical thinking skills for any human learning it. Most Jews also have parents who push their children to be the best versions of themselves that they can be, and have passed down traditions like giving at least 10% of our yearly income to charity, taking care of our mm -hmm. own community, helping others in need outside of our community, and having deep love for our heritage and collective purpose. That being said, there are also many Jews who are not financially successful and live below the poverty line. Your generalization stemming from your individual reality in this video game of life does not define the experience of an entire collective. Your jealousy comes from looking at our results, but if you want to understand the why, you should look at the millions of Jews who've suffered, bled, and died to make sure we are still here, and the efforts that our ancestors have invested to make sure we live on and push forward. Any people's past must never turn them into victims or poison their hearts at the sight of positivity outside of their own context. Uh, so the thing is, we talk about it all the time on here. And mm -hmm. just from that last statement, from what he was saying, all the things that he said is things that the black community doesn't do. We yep. as a whole, we don't push, we push for our kids to, going to sports and stuff like that because you know sports music entertainment right mm -hmm. uh even like when our we like we push for our kids there's plenty of people that i know around me who have degrees who aren't in their career fields to include my sister who has a biology degree right now which she's working towards something else but that's a part of life right i feel like in other communities, regardless if you want to go into the career field or not, you do it because you spent four to five years in college. You go into the career field that you want to do. You become stable in your life. And then you move forward. If it's not something that you want to do, you at least experienced it. But a lot of people in other cultures, they stick to whatever they go to school for. It doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it doesn't always go like that because I was in Ghana mm -hmm. and there was two engineers out there, um, Indian engineers. Uh, if you guys are ever in Ghana, Django Brothers, or was it Django Brothers? I think it was Django Brothers, which ironically, uh, the movie, but either way. But mm -hmm. Django Brothers uh, Brewery is in Ghana and it's actually pretty solid. They, I believe they were engineers and they decided one day, like, hey, this isn't what we want to do. So they moved down to Ghana and decided to do craft beer. Now, don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've been down to Africa. So, but for sure, they succeeded in their career fields and just were working a nine to five and decided, like, you know what, let's work for ourselves. Now, when I was talking to them, they said they put, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars into this brewery because you have to think they're starting from the ground up. Um, they didn't have everything that they needed, and that was a couple years ago, so I'm sure by now they collected the money that they needed to propel their business to be further. But even at that level, they're competing with Heineken um, mm -hmm. down there because Heineken and then the local beer star, and I think uh, Leon or Lion uh, beer, 
those were their competitors. Also, they're going into a market where craft beer is not really, it's, it's big in America, but trying to put craft beer in Africa is, it's a big, it's a big pitch. Especially yes. when most people are like, oh, I just drink the local beer. And craft beer is kind of for beer enthusiasts who love beer, but also want to try different types of beers, like smoking a cigar, or just having like your connoisseur of certain items. So just seeing that work ethic, I don't see that in the Black community. And we've talked about it where we were growing up, most of us with single parent homes. Mm -hmm. um we're not being pushed in the right directions that we need to even though our parents think that pushing us in the school and pushing us in the sports is going to be our big break because as another video broke down out of 400,000 black men who are trying to go into sports there's only seven jobs available on the pro level so what are those other 300 and 9300 or a thousand uh do um but i'll let you go into some more details i'm still trying to articulate myself because there's been a lot that's been going on so so this whole uh connie debacle has given me a lot of uh thought in the current state of the black community and the current state of um you know how other minorities operate so i wanted to we wanted to do this video in particular but we couldn't find it it was pretty much a jewish gentleman talking about you know the 10 secrets that uh jewish people do to be successful and it kind of opened my eyes to a lot of um dissim dissimilarities that you have in the black community so I'm just paraphrasing. So pretty much they stay together, right? Um, they marry within their own. They have a rich culture. Also, what's very important is that they teach their kids, especially their sons, to be business owners. Um, if I'm if I'm misquoting a guy, I'm sorry, but pretty much he said to the extent where it's a sin to not teach your son about business because it's it's not teaching your son about business how to own a business is akin to not giving him the tools to eat you're making him a thief right because if you don't teach as a father if you don't teach him about business what is he going to do he's going to steal so they have all these businesses they they even say something to the effect of like um being a worker is a sin or it's 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 looked down upon at the very least like you got to own your own stuff um you know they have the shabbat or the sabbath where they rest they it's religious it's it's more um ordained for them to rest where they don't mess with business they don't they just have a community they come together they worship god so on and so forth right so this is the big thing that i've seen experience as being um, a Caribbean American, living in the Caribbean for a long period of time, living in a different country and living in the States. The biggest difference, I think, and the issue is with Black people, especially Black Americans, compared to other races of people, and I would say the other extreme is Jewish people, is culture, right, and identity, which slavery has destroyed, especially in Black America, right? Because the, one of the most unique things about the Jewish community is not only that it's a race of people, well, some people would debate whether it's a race or not, because you have Black Jews, you have White Jews, yada, 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 but the predominantly, um, or what we see as Jewish people is not only a race, but it's a religion, right? And what is a culture? What is a big part of culture? It's religion. You look in any culture around the world, there's always some sort of spirituality or some sort of a religion that binds the people together whether me being in japan you have obong you have the ancestral belief um some japanese people believe in shintoism buddhism um you know in the west we believe in christianity in the middle east we have islam so on and so forth with the black people especially in black america um for lack of a better term 
um, a lot of foundationally black Americans don't have an identity, don't have a culture because I was destroyed in slavery, right? So I find that, especially nowadays, the programming, um, the propaganda and everything, people don't think for themselves, a lot of black people don't think for themselves, anything that goes against black people, we always have a reaction to it, but we have no power back to it. And we, a lot of people now, especially with this Kanye debacle, they talk a good game about, oh, well, he's a anti-Semite, he's this or that. And, that's, and what he done and said is neither here nor there, but it's like, what have you done to help the Black community? What have you done when Kanye said certain things that could be misconstrued or straight up just strange, or other people said other things against Black people? What do most people do? They just sit and, and say, oh, I am against this and that. I'm a part of BLM, but they don't put their money where their mouth is. And what is kind of like trickled down from this whole you know, infrastructure of Judaism as as described by that uh, Jewish gentleman that I saw from the from the from the video is that they own everything. Their 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 biggest thing is business ownership. They don't want to work for nobody but themselves. They pass down their their wealth. I think he also mentioned something about like whenever they save money, they always do like a third of their money real estate, a third of their money in their business, and a third in something else. I don't remember what it was. So everything is tied up in their culture in their community or in the black community nothing is tied up in the culture or the community right so my question is is apart from let's say whatever he said was anti-semitic let's say you know you know connie's office is rocker it is true a lot of the media a lot of all these radio stations um TV channels, all this stuff are controlled by Jewish people. But whether you believe in conspiracy theorists, whatever, what is the very root cause of it? Okay, what is the very root, you know, idiosyncrasy about it, right? Or the uniqueness of it? Jewish people and other minorities, not just Jewish people, they own stuff. Even today, I was talking to Will and I had to go get a suit. And there was an Indian gentleman that uh, helped me. He owned an Indian. He owned a store on the on the on this uh, base, right? And you know, it was him, and I believe it was a small relative. I don't know if it was his son or whatever, but I know he was teaching that young man like how to sell suits, how to talk to customers, how to ring up customers, how to repair suits, how to hem them, how to adjust them. He was teaching his son a skill, not just sending him to school to get some useless degree. And at the end of it, he gave me a flyer um, of this izakaya. For those of you who are not familiar with Japanese culture, izakaya is pretty much like a bar that has kind of food. It's like a, it's like a cafe slash bar type deal. And I'm pretty sure that owner of that izakaya was a relative of him because there's a bunch of Indians in um in this part of Japan where I live at. And they're all coming together. I believe one of the Indian brothers are are like is a millionaire in Okinawa, which is pretty insane considered he's a foreigner. And just just to get to the point, it's just funny to me that we are all in this uproar about Kane calling him this, this, and that. Where if you just concentrate and forget about all the noise around this whole thing, what is the question that's being asked? What is what is the issue that's being pushed forward? Black people don't own anything. Other groups of people own most of the stuff. We are just consumers. Other people in the in American society in the West are producers. So when so exactly when Kanye said slavery was a choice, whether you believe yes or no, no one did anything because black people can't do anything. Whenever we put out music that's degrading to black women, that's degrading to black men, that that pretty much program people to kill kill ourselves and all this stuff. No one does anything because not only is it making them money, but we don't have power to do anything because we don't own anything. But as soon as a black person like Kanye or any other person forms their mouth to say anything Jewish in their mouth, they're done. Because And if anything people can take away from this is that is what real power is. When someone can even 
pay you a compliment to your people, but if it's misconstrued anyway, they're canceled, they're, they're destroyed. That's what real power is. And black people have not even a fraction of that. And that's what we should be concentrating on right now. Not whether or not Kanye is anti-Semitic or this and this and that. It's like, look at the conditions of what we're at and look at the conditions of other minorities. That is the message that he's trying to put forth at the core of it. We need to be like other minorities in that we need to build our own stuff. We need to build our own banks, our own groceries, our own everything, so that if anything happens, we don't have to worry. We don't have to depend on people. We can't get canceled. But that's just me. And people are not going to listen because, you know, I'm preaching or whatever. But I mean, half the time, half the time, people don't even have the time to listen to like a full on conversation. Like we've talked about it before where people have short attention spans and they literally hear the first three seconds or something. And if it's not going the way they want, yeah. it's like, yo, turn this shit off. Like, let me let me just get out of here. But with that being said, that is our first part of this. So when we come back next video, we'll continue to go on and we'll go into more and more discussions uh, into this because it's not just a simple, like, let me put out a video and talk about it in one go. And I feel like we both feel like this is something that needs to be talked about because even with the comments that we get on our videos, it's just like, it's always, it feels like we're just attacking each other. So. With that being said,